Hi, everybody. Welcome to Discover College Soccer. Today, I'm lucky enough to be joined by Coach Zach Hammond from Bluffton. Welcome, Coach. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Well, you, you, you got a nice Division Three women's program over there in the, in the good old Midwest. Uh, I was down in Evansville for a couple of years uh, coaching, so nice. uh, we, we did... We didn't play Bluffton, but but some of your your other compatriots we we cross paths with. But yeah. uh, so let's talk a little bit about the recruiting side of things. Um, you know, now that the season's wrapped up, are you uh, pushing in full gear? Were you were you over in Indianapolis this past weekend, uh, in braving the cold and snow, checking things out? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I've been out on the road. Yeah, the last couple weekends, um, lots of stuff going on. Um, showcases yesterday was actually like a organization held like an ID camp at Ohio Dominican. Oh, yeah. um, so I was over there as well. So getting, getting out everywhere that we can. Yeah. I, I went to high school about a mile from, from Ohio Dominican. So it's a great little spot nice. there. Yeah. Um, so what are you trying to wrap up your, your, 23 class right now are you looking at 24s like when do you really start talking to players and and yeah getting hot and head yeah so 23s yeah we're starting to get towards the towards the end um we've got quite a few on, on the commit list so starting to get pickier and pickier with that side of side of it um 24 is definitely starting to ramp up now that they're um for us definitely the perfect timing right like junior year they're, they're done with their season stuff's kind of slowed down a little bit so now now we want to get them on campus um so that way they can get the experience and meet the current players and all that sort of stuff so are, are there tournaments that are kind of uh you know must see tv on, on your list that you get to every year that are kind of the main ones that you're looking at when you're scouting players yeah, so Grand, Grand Park there in Indiana, that's, I mean, when they host stuff, it's fantastic because they draw from all over. This past weekend, I mean, there was there was teams from all over the country. Um, and even the one two weekends ago, like there was a team from Alaska at that one. So wow. like, so that, that one, when they host stuff, got to try and get to that at least one day. Um, as far as like around the area, um, Cleveland um, hosted one recently. Um, Cincinnati is always good. Um, so yeah, the the bigger cities, the bigger club ones, um, we definitely try to get to as much as possible. Now you mentioned a, a camp at, at Ohio Dominican. Are, uh, do you guys run your own camps? Are you pretty active in working other camps? How how important are camps to your recruiting? Oh, I I love camps. Um, both on both sides of that, like. Um, outside organizations and schools and stuff. Um, I've made a lot of connections in those areas to be able to come down. And, and I, I love the camp scene because you get to know players a little bit more, right? Like college coaches, we get to run the session and players can be a part of that and really get a feel of like, oh, this coach coaches in this way, right? Um, but yeah, we're, we're ramping up our camps as well. When I came in, um, camps weren't really much of a thing on the women's soccer side, um, but I, I love them. It gives, like I said, gives players, recruits a good chance to get to know the coach, but also our current players can be there kind of like working, help run things, and they can get to know the culture in that sort of way, talking with the players. So, For sure. Well, whether it's at camps or tournaments or, or anything like that, what's kind of your hierarchy of things that you're looking for when you're recruiting a player, whether that's on the field stuff or off the field stuff? Yeah, so I have kind of like an acronym that I've been using for a few near years. It actually spells out team, um, so it's pretty easy to remember. Um, T is for the technical side, right? Like, um, I mean, I feel like every coach looks for that really, uh, like how good they are on the ball and that sort of thing. But also, like, the defending side is important, right? Like, um, how, how they – do they just, like, sprint after the ball and, like, chase it? Or, like, are they breaking feet down and all that, right? Um, the E is like the effort and energy enthusiasm. So that gets more into like the personality. Do they communicate on the field, um, off the field? Like I said, per personality, talking with them, would they be a good fit like into the culture or would they kind of be kind of awkward or stand out, however you want to say that? Um, a, a is another easy one, athleticism, right? Because you need that in college soccer. Like if you're fast, uh, 
fast and athletic in college soccer, you can you can go pretty far. Um, and then M is like that movement soccer IQ, right? So it gives me a good baseline of like, if you were to come to to Bluffton, like what what am I going to have to teach you um, sort of thing, right? So yeah, makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Well, in terms of, you know, the stuff that parents are are, are very concerned with, it's, you know, sometimes the, that, that check or that they're going to have to write. So yeah, can you yeah. give me just the overall sense of what the, the cost, financial aid, just the, just the general uh, overview yeah. of what that looks like in Bluffton. Yeah, so um, our overall tuition is about 34K, um, which, yeah, being a small private school, like not too much surprise there. Um, but our academic packages are, are pretty good um, from what I've seen comparatively elsewhere. Um, if you have like a 3.5 GPA, you, you can qualify for like, um, an 18k package um, right at, right off the bat any higher GPA it, it increases from there um, so like that's a pretty good chunk right there and then then there's smaller ones after that that you can qualify for at the school um, you can stack from outside um, fastball comes into play um, so there's definitely ways to make it affordable um, Sometimes you gotta, especially the outside scholarship. Sometimes you gotta put in the work, though, right? Like writing essays and all that. So, yeah, absolutely. Well, do you guys look uh, at the transfer portal at all? Are you recruiting internationally at all? How, does that factor in? Yeah, yeah. So the international scene is a little harder for us because um, we don't have. We, we do give scholarships for them, but it's not as much as like most want <laughs> to put it plainly um usually the budget for internationals isn't very high we we can get it down to about 22 for them um which is lower but definitely not in a huge range of a lot of internationals um, sure. which is fine like i i get that um as far as the transfer portal starting to dive into that um because we've got so I started here in March, um, and so really trying to even out the classes a little bit. So next year's senior class is five, um, while like the freshman class in 23, I'm looking to bring in probably about 10. So that's like, that's very bottom heavy, right? Like, yeah. So try, I am interested, yeah, in, in trying to even it out. Um, plus it adds some experience, right? So. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's, let's switch gears, talk a little bit more about the school. Some folks may not be uh, familiar with Bluffton. Uh, you know, it's in that, that northwest corner of Ohio, uh, kind of yeah. close to a lot of different things. But, you know, mm -hmm. besides what I'm going to learn uh, by clicking around the website, can you give me some some insights into into what you really liked about the school since you've, you've got there? Yeah, I love Bluffton uh, as like a community school. Like it – it's a small community. We've got about 800 students on campus. 75% um, ish um, are actually student athletes. So like that, that community feel is very apparent across campus. That's what I noticed for my in-person interview, um, just the connection. And, and even still, like I, I haven't yet hit a full year here. I'm still meeting new people and everyone acts like they've already known me for like years sort of thing. Um, really open, really personable and all that sort of stuff. So that, that part's awesome. Um, and with that, like, as far as like student athletes, like you get small class sizes, um, which, which is important. Like I, I love bringing in good soccer players and all that and like being competitive, but at the end of the day, after four years, they do have to graduate. So that means getting the grades done, um, that they need to. So getting extra help from professors and that sort of thing is, is a huge help. Well, you, you mentioned grades. So, you know, with all those academic commitments along with sports commitments, how do your players specifically kind of balance those two things and what support systems does the school offer to really help them in that journey? Yeah. The number one thing that I've noticed um, like successfully here for, for athletes is like time management right? Like you have to be able to time manage. Um, like I'll help players as much as possible. Like if, if there's individuals that do kind of struggle with that, scheduling themselves out throughout the day, I'll help walk them through that and all of that sort of stuff. 
um, if there's classes they're struggling in, again, professors are willing to help um, because they, they have smaller class sizes, so they actually know names and <laughs> that sort of thing. Um, and then there are tutors available. I have yet to hear an issue on campus of, of someone needing a tutor and not finding one sort of thing. Like there's tons available. Um, as far as like program based, we do have study tables in place. Um, when you when you come in as a freshman, you get, have to report six hours per week, um, which honestly, if you're just doing your homework during that time, like you should be able to do, get those easy. Um, and then after your first semester, we actually base it on GPA. So we kind of have like a reward system, like the higher GPA you have, the less study tables you have to report. So, um, but yeah, academics is huge to me. Like if, if players are struggling, like we're, we're going to put in more implementation of, of different things, whether it's like kind of like proof or however you want to say it, like that you're meeting with tutor, that you're meeting with professor, like taking the necessary steps to have that success. Okay. No, that's great. Well, <clears throat> looking back here over the last couple months uh, during mm -hmm. season, can you just walk me through what, what a typical week looked like for a player in terms of classes and meals and practices sure. and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, so we typically are doing soccer stuff in season about six days out of the week. Um, we have to take one day off at some point. Typically, it's a Sunday because that's the easiest usually. Um, Conference-wise, this game schedule is very regular, Wednesday, Saturdays. Um, otherwise, yeah, we're training the other parts of the, of the week. Um, a couple days a week in the mornings. The weight room is reserved for players to go in and um, do like an in-season lift. Um, it's very early in the morning. Uh, one day was like reserved at 6 a.m., the other one at 7. So we avoid classes. They can get in, get out. It's not a huge demand, like time time crunch and all that. Um, then the then the rest of the day is like besides the two-hour block for training, like it, it's open for the student athletes. They can go to class. Um, a couple of or actually more than a couple of upper, upperclassmen have gotten like part-time jobs here on campus or just off. Um, so they can kind of do whatever they need to do um, to be successful. Okay. Um, in terms of like your, you said Wednesday, Saturday on the game schedule, I mean, mm -hmm. looking at your conference, it looks like you, you're not, you're not traveling too far, but it's yeah. also, you know, not right next door either. So uh, yeah. what, how does how does all the travel work in terms of missing classes and and mm -hmm. what's kind of an average road trip for you guys? Yeah, no, you you nailed it. Like our conference isn't too spread out. Um, the furthest pa this past fall was down to Hanover, uh, which is about a four, just under four. Um, next year we will be going to Rose Holman, which is, uh, if I remember correctly, it's a closer to four and a half because you got to go around I Indianapolis and all that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, dealing, dealing with travel, like ooh, academics classes wise, the communication factor is huge. Like it starts with me. I give out our travel schedule and like itinerary and all that sort of stuff starting in preseason. So players have it well in advance. Um, and then once classes start and like we're approaching days, um, there's two levels of communication that go out. First one's from me, 48 hours in advance. I have to send out an email to professors saying like, hey, just a reminder, women's soccer is gonna be gone, leaving this time and, and kind of some details. And then it's also on the players to go to the professors more than just the, the day before or day of uh, to, to talk with the professor, like especially if they're missing a test or speech or projects do or whatever it might be set up the necessary um, procedures to be able to still succeed yeah absolutely no that's great well let's talk then a little bit more about the team and, and games and whatnot yeah. so you, you mentioned evening after classes is there a roster size overall that is what you feel is kind of an ideal size that you're trying to hit yeah so this past fall we had 25 on the roster um, the biggest I want to get to is 30. Um, so I think that's pretty perfect. Four of those being goalkeepers, um, the rest field players, obviously, um, that allows for a lot of depth, right? Like, 
I mean, bigger, faster, stronger game. Um, injuries do happen, unfortunately. Um, we had we had some freak injuries this year. Uh, we had a senior center back second season or second game of the season go down with a broken ankle um, just just during a slide tackle. Like our foot got caught wrong in the turf and just yeah, it was not a pretty scene, but like yeah. it was just freak stuff, right? So a guy have depth, illness happens, academic stuff happens. So like all, all those reasons we have to be able to compete. So ha having depth is huge. Um, also in training, like I'm a huge proponent of at least like 20 to 30 minutes at the end of training is going to be bigger sided 11 v 11 or whatever we have numbers for. Um, because it gives those game like moments um, and it gives the players to chance like to prove themselves, right? Like, uh, as a coach, sometimes you hear, uh, oh, coach, I wish you would just give me a chance in a game, right? Well, yeah. if we're doing those in, in training, then that's your time. So, um, so yeah, so, so 30 is about the perfect. Any bigger than that, then it starts getting a little harder, uh, both on the players and, and coaches, to, to really make it manageable. Yeah, for sure. Well, you talk about the coaches. Do you, do you have other staff? What, what does that kind of look like in terms of the coaching staff? Yeah, so I've got two kind of like part-time coaches. Um, one is a senior, actually, softball player here. She's interested in coaching after she graduates. Um, but her fall um, semester here, she was able to do like an internship through us, um, which was awesome. She played soccer in high school and that sort of thing, so loves the game. Um, and she, she was great. Um, and then I have another part-time um, assistant slash goalkeeper coach um she was actually just doing stuff only at that local high school um and i kind of like <laughs> swooped in and scooped her up to to come over and help out with us so um they're both awesome they work hard the girls love them um so we are actually looking as well for for a graduate assistant still um the one that i when i came in in the spring she left to go somewhere else like a better like it was a step up opportunity for her so uh, but it was late in the spring semester and couldn't find anyone to find fill it. So, um, so yeah, starting that process of of looking for that again. Always, always fun. Always fun trying yep. to find find new staff. Um, oh well, yeah. What uh, can you describe your style of coaching and kind of just the overall team style of play? What that culture of the team looks like? Yeah. So, playing style is probably the easiest to start with. There. Uh, Playing style, like, I say it's possession-based, but more specifically, like, I want us to play with a purpose. Like, if a team is high-pressing us, I don't, like, yeah, I want us to try and keep the ball, but if necessary, all right, let's 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 have a purposeful ball forward, um, like a bigger ball, not just not just a kickball, not just whack it. Like, play, play with a purpose, right? Like, if a team's sitting back, let's possess forward. Let's not try to play in the limited space behind them. Um, I, I want us to be able to read the play, adapt to whatever the opponent's doing, that sort of thing. Um, like switching, switching the point of attack is important with that and like all that sort of stuff, right? Like um, could go on and on with specifics of that, but that, that's to sum that up. Now my coaching style, I kind of have two different ones um, during training. I'm very high energy. Like I am 100% an extrovert. Um, so like I am all over the place. I don't stand still. I'm walking around the grid sometimes through it to get a different view if necessary. Um, but I, I want to be able to hit every player. Cause like it, it definitely happens that like players get stuck on one side some, sometimes, even though you tell them to move around and stuff, like there's still those that kind of like try to stay in their one area. Right. So like I try to see everyone and give everyone points as much as possible. So um, so yeah, I'm high energy all over the place, giving coaching points, trying to coach within the flow of training rather than stopping it too much. If, if it's a repetitive thing that like, we just can't get down, then I will freeze it and like, uh, I'll make points and that sort of thing. But for the most part, I, I want them to learn within the, within the activity, within the game, whatever it might be, rather than just me talking all the time. Right. So during games, it's a little bit different. I'm a, I'm a little quieter. Um, I'm still up. Um, I'm still very energetic on the sidelines. I, I still stay on my feet and that sort of thing. If I sit down, it's like 10 seconds and I'm back up. Um, 
but I'm not joystick coaching during a game. Like I, I might help solve problems and like that sort of thing. But for the most part, I want players to figure it out. Like uh, I often tell them like training is the studying for the test and the game is the actual test, right? Like got to see what we, we learned, what we know and move forward with that. That makes a lot of sense. Well, in terms of, you know, now that the regular season's done, you're you're looking into the winter and, and spring season. Can you, can yeah. you just give an overview of what that off season's going to look like until until you get back to to next year? For sure, yeah. So once season ended, um, I actually just gave gave the girls time off. Like I didn't give them anything expected from me. Um, like we we'll get together a couple times here before the semester ends uh, as just kind of fun fun times together. Uh, but as far as soccer and like workouts, nothing until next semester. Um, when we come back in January, we'll start um, like the workout packet will start mid January. Um, but the way it works for yeah D three is like everything before we get to those allotted team trainings is all technically voluntary. Um, so everything will be put in place for them to use and, and succeed. Like three times a week, there's going to be a lifting packet. Uh, a couple days a week, there's going to be like agi agility and cardio. Um, in the evenings, like later in the evenings, um, there's going to be futsal a few times a week set up in the gym. Um, but technically, it's all, like I said, voluntary, and they don't have to be there if they, if they don't want to sort of thing. Um, but I tell players like, the, that time is your time to grow, right? Like if, if you want to play in the fall, you got to put in the work in the off season. So um, once we hit about mid-March, uh, we're going to yeah get to our, our team trainings, which we have 15 of those. So about it spans out to about three a week for five weeks and then one day of, of scrimmage um, where we're looking to have like a round robin with some other teams to make it really worth it since we only have one of those available. Right, that would make sense. Well, yeah. Coach, we've covered a lot of ground and, and I always like to end these the same way and that's what didn't we cover? Is there anything else you want to let us know, whether it's about recruiting, the school, the soccer, anything? I give you the last word here. Oh man, uh, last word. I would say like, especially to recruits, like make sure schools check all your boxes, right? Like. The, the transfer portal is like, don't get me wrong, it's great, like if if you need to use it, but at the end of the day, you should really know everything about the school that you wanna go to. It should be a great fit. Every single box should check off. Um, I always tell recruits when I talk to them in person, like if, 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 knock on wood, that you like have a season career ending injury, are you still gonna enjoy your time at the school? If the answer is no, then, maybe the school's not for you right like that or or suddenly a coach leaves like knock on like i have no plans to, to leave but like knock on wood something happens i'm not here are you still gonna enjoy it like that those are huge things to to really consider um because like i said transfer portal is there for a reason but it, the number that keeps growing uh is astounding so Agreed. <clears throat> well, Coach, I really appreciate the time. Wish you the best of luck as you gear up uh, for all this recruiting and, and your first full year there. And uh, if you're making the convention in Philly, uh, make sure you come by and, and say hello at our sure. table, all right? Yeah, looking forward to it. Thank you for having me on. It was, it was enjoyable. Awesome. Thanks. Appreciate it, Coach. No problem. The 2023 United Soccer Coaches Convention is coming up fast and you don't want to miss it. The largest gathering of soccer coaches, administrators, and fans in the world is coming to Philadelphia from January 11th to the 15th. Only at this convention can you attend sessions crafted with your coaching level and desired topics in mind. Presented by world-class educators, our collection of over 200 lecture sessions and field demonstrations will offer every coach something to bring back to their own training sessions. Visit www.unitedsoccercoachesconvention.org to register. Join us as we celebrate our passion for the beautiful game, and we'll see you there.